In this video, we are going to be talking about the top 5 most common shrimp keeping mistakes, how to avoid them, and how to ensure your shrimp are healthy. I'm also going to give an important bonus tip, so make sure you stay around till the end. Starting off, mistake number 1 is improper acclimation. Most people don't realize this, but a lot of shrimp are super sensitive to new environments with different pH and temperatures, and this is especially true when you first introduce them to the tank. Shrimp are highly sensitive creatures, and when you add them to a new environment that's different from where they've been living previously, it's going to be a huge hit on their overall health. As for the acclimation method, you could either drip acclimate or slowly add tank water to the bag, but whichever method you choose, make sure to do it slowly so that they can adjust preferably 30 minutes or longer. That gives the shrimp adequate time to adjust to their new environment. Moving on, mistake number two is overfeeding. This might sound obvious, but overfeeding is actually the most common cause of shrimp death. Aquarium shrimp cannot eat a lot, and if you overfeed the tank, they may not be able to consume everything given to them, which can cause problems. Now, it doesn't have to be that their bodies can't handle all that food. The more likely event is that the food will end up uneaten, and it's just going to be left there which can cause high nitrate levels. High nitrate levels will poison or kill your shrimp. So make sure to just not overfeed them. Don't give them more than what they can consume in around 1 or 2 minutes. Make sure to monitor the feeding especially if you have something like an automatic feeder. Because a lot of times those can go unnoticed. The third mistake on this list is buying high end shrimp when starting out. Now what I mean by this is a lot of people when they first buy their shrimp, they're gonna buy super high quality shrimp that costs like $10, $20 each. I would not recommend this if you are not highly experienced with shrimp keeping because just think about it, if you don't have a lot of experience keeping shrimp, then if something happens to those expensive ones you buy, you're gonna lose a ton. This is why I recommend starting out with common breeder shrimp, usually those are not that expensive and they're a lot more forgiving. So that way, even if you make some mistakes at the beginning, you're not going to lose a ton of money. In addition to that, high-end shrimp are usually also more sensitive because they've been selectively bred and normally their genes aren't as strong. So the key thing here is when you are first starting out with shrimp keeping, do not buy these super expensive shrimp. Because chances are you're going to make a mistake and you're going to regret it. Mistake number four is not doing enough research. Different shrimp have different requirements, so it's important that you do your research before getting the type of shrimp you want. For example, most neocardina shrimp are hardier than others, while cardina shrimp are typically harder to keep, but some cardina shrimp might actually do well in your local waters, so be sure to research. Another benefit of doing research is that you might find out things about the shrimp that you have not known before. This can be extremely useful for determining your shrimp's tank parameters and their ideal setup. But the biggest reason, of course, is you will not make as many mistakes. It is always good to be prepared whether it's shrimp keeping or anything else. Usually at those big chain stores like Petco or PetSmart, they do have a reference guide where you could learn the basics. And of course, there's websites, YouTube, and all those other social media platforms. There's no excuse for you to say that you can't do research because you are literally doing research right now by watching this video. Mistake number five is bad water parameters. As you probably know by now, shrimp are super duper sensitive and bad water parameters that do not suit the shrimp's needs, such as temperature and pH levels, can oftentimes hurt the shrimp. They might die off in huge numbers. I would not recommend changing more than 25% of the water each time, and it really does help if you have a tank size of at least 5 gallons. If you keep them in a bowl, maybe consider trying out the wall stand method, where you add lots of plants but do not do as much water changes. So the key thing to take away is to keep your water parameters stable, make sure you have a heater so the temperature stays the same, and overall just be careful. Mistake number 6 is keeping shrimp with bad tank mates. Cichlids, grommies, rainbow fish are some common examples of tank mates that are not suitable for shrimp. A lot of times you may not realize it, so make sure you check the fish compatibility beforehand. In the case of some fish, if the shrimp grow large enough, they might not go after them. But in that scenario, make sure you provide plenty of hiding spaces so that the shrimp feel safe. Unfortunately, these guys are so delicious to many kinds of creatures, so be aware of that. The seventh mistake I see a lot of beginners making is adding toxic foreign chemicals. Now, what I mean by this is a lot of people will buy decorations that are not aquarium safe, and a lot of times those contain chemicals which will kill your fish and shrimp. 
This also includes adding driftwood or leaf litter from unknown sources. For example, if you get some leaf litter from a gold field, those leaves could have been exposed to chemicals, which would not be good. And therefore, it's always important to check where you get your things from, especially plastic decorations. A lot of those are not intended for aquariums. But make sure if you want to get any type of decorations, make sure that they are aquarium safe. As for driftwood and rocks, those could be more tricky. The eighth shrimp keeping mistake is underfeeding your shrimp. Now we've talked about overfeeding and how it's harmful. Underfeeding can be just as bad in some cases. Some people will just think that shrimp are algae eaters and they're just gonna eat whatever algae there is in the tank. But the truth is, a lot of algae are not consumable. For example, a mono shrimp are the only type of aquarium shrimp that will go after black beard algae. So if you keep cherry shrimp or bamboo shrimp or some other type, they will not do anything to the black beard algae. So you can't rely on algae as the primary food source, especially if you have a lot of shrimp. Now, if you do have a lot of algae in the tank, you don't have to feed them. In that case, you can make them keep eating the algae. Make sure that they can eat the algae though. As I mentioned before, most shrimp do not eat black beard algae, same goes with staghorn algae and some others. But my point is, if there's very little algae in your tank, make sure to feed them or else your shrimp are simply going to starve. Just make sure your shrimp have something to eat. Okay, so you've made it this far and as promised, here is my pro tip, which is to add as much live plants as you possibly can. A heavily planted aquarium is like heaven for shrimp. This is due to many reasons. In the wild, they have plenty of areas to hide in. They could just sort of like blend into their environment. Without live plants, the shrimp would not be as comfortable. Also, aquarium plants are healthy for your aquarium in general, so it's always good to have them. But with shrimp, if you add lots of it, you're going to create the perfect environment. They're also going to breed a lot more and reproduce. A few recommendations I'd give would be water wisteria, cryptochorines, floating plants because they like to grab onto the roots, Anubius, Hornwort, and finally my number one recommendation, Guppy Grass. Trust me, your shrimp will love you for this. So there you have it, the top 8 most common shrimp keeping mistakes. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.